How's it going today, guys? Happy Sunday. God bless you all today. Uh, he's just been wrecking me with all these different things, revelations and visions and dreams and just everything he's given me so much, but it's so good at the same time. Uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. One of the things he showed me today while I was in church, I just got a revelation of, of uh, the fear of the Lord, reverence for the Lord. In the Bible it says, uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding. It also says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So those verses are separated, different spots in the Bible, <clears throat> and he showed me how they are really together. Because if you do not have fear for the Lord, a reverence for the Lord, then you shall perish. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, all right, and understanding. So if fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and our people perish for the lack of knowledge, that means people are perishing for a lack of a fear of God. Now, if you have a fear for the Lord, a reverence for God, you're going to obey his commands. You're going to love and you're going to do the things he asks us to do. That's part of fearing him. And when I say fear him, that means to be scared of the wrath that will come upon you if you don't follow the word and his commands and the things he asks us to do. If you don't get a relationship with Christ, what will happen to you? You go to hell, um, you'll have plague or disease, uh, anything that could come against you on the physical earth. Uh, you could lose a lot of things, people, because you don't fear the Lord. It means you're perishing for the lack of knowledge, the lack of the reverence for the Lord. Uh, another thing he gave me today was a question for you all. What are you doing with your life each day that God should keep you alive for another day? The breath we breathe isn't ours, y'all. It's, it's God's. Are you doing stuff with your life that God would want to keep you alive? He want to keep giving you that breath? They want to keep giving you uh, advancement or people in your life or glory, wealth, anything. Are you doing things for him with your life that he should want to keep you alive another day? That's it heavy with me. Yeah, I'm doing those things right now, but he wants me to share this with you guys. Ask yourselves that. Take that moral inventory. Are you doing things for God? That's what he wants that's what he wants. It's a form of worship and love is obeying him, of reverence is obeying him. And to obey him is to get up, do something. Get on your knees, do something. Get on your face, do something. Obviously praying, that's what that is. Get out there, make fishers of men, disciples of all nations. God's so good. He comes through anything that, this, that Satan tries to put up any kind of wall, any stronghold, anything. God can blast right through that with no problem. I've had experiences in my life in the past where I've been drunk or high and I started talking about God still through that and he's came and smashed it all out and, and people have been saved during that. Now that's not the way we're supposed to do things. It's just an example that he can do that in those instances. But that's not that's not right. That he did that before I, I I came into I came into a fullness with him. We all have a measure of Christ, but together the body is uh, able to have the fullness of Christ. So this is another reason for this unity revival thing. That but I'll talk about that more. The farther I get into it, the more I know. Um, but God's glory. And the things he has for you are just like, it's breathtaking. You start, you you have emotions you might not have had or that were buried when you start coming uh, into a relationship with Christ. He wrecks you, makes you cry, tears of joy, uh, the feeling of the love he gives you, the things that he puts in your life, the people he puts in your life, the way he advances you. 
I've lived in the world. I've lived in sin. I was the chief of all sinners, right? Like Paul said. You name it, I've probably done it. And it, I'm not glorifying that in any, by any means. But saying that, I also am living, trying to live as best as I possibly can for Christ. And the difference between the attitude I have, the feeling inside of me, the glory that I feel from him, the love that I feel, the people in my life, the things he's doing in my life, it's, it's, not, even a, it's not even a contest. We don't have to do evil to be advanced in this world, to be advanced with all the things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and the rest of these things shall be added to you. He wants your love and your relationship, your time. Give God these things and you'll have the desires of your heart. He wants us to prosper. This is how you prosper. I just love you guys and I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be blessed. I want you to live a fullness of life and in the fullness of Christ and to be able to experience the goodness and glory and love he has for us in all the different ways. I can't stress you guys enough how important it is to live for God. Like I said, I've done it both ways. There ain't nothing there in the world. There ain't nothing there for you. Getting drunk, getting high, having sex before marriage. That's a big one. I should probably do some sort of a teaching on that soon. Sex before marriage. Don't be doing that. Promises. That's a covenant. You don't want to break that covenant. A blood covenant. It's supposed to be. But I'll get into that another time. Read your word. Pray. Bless one another. Love one another. I love you guys. Stay prayed up. God bless you.